58% of voters say they are open to supporting an independent candidate in a contest between former President Trump and President Biden, according to new Harvard Caps Harris polling. A majority of respondents said they do not want Biden or Trump to run in 2024. However, in a hypothetical rematch election between two, uh, Trump slightly edges out Biden with 45% of the vote to Biden's 43. And in the Democratic camp, alarm bells are already ringing as President Biden's approval continues to stall around the low 40s. Former Clinton aide and pollster Mark Penn issued a frantic warning for Team Blue in the New York Times this Sunday, writing in an op-ed, quote, people are afraid of being walloped financially, being injured or menaced by criminals, being in a country without strong borders or COVID protections for immigrants, and being under threat of nuclear weapons. If Mr. Biden and Democratic leaders cannot effectively address these fears, the wave election will hit them in November. A rising panel joins us now to weigh in. Chris Jackson is senior vice president at Ipsos, and Rachel Bovard is policy director for the Conservative Partnership Institute. Welcome to you both. Greetings. Good morning. So, Chris, I mean, we keep having uh, segments about this where we basically just say, yeah, this is looks really, really bad for Democrats. And, and there's always like, yeah, well, there's some time to turn it around, but that time it keeps keeps decreasing every time we talk about this. It's another week closer uh, to the midterms and then closer to uh, 2024. You know what? Uh, what do Democrats? What can they do at this point? Is there anything they can do to to avoid the the wipeout that is probably coming this year? Well, it's important to keep a long term perspective. And the truth is, in a midterm election, the president's party tends to get walloped. That's just sort of the gravity of the American political system. But the Democrats this year really are facing some strong headwinds and a lot of it's sort of outside of their power. Things like inflation, things like the lingering pandemic, uh, the conflict in Ukraine that's sort of scaring a lot of Americans. A lot of these things, Democrats have a limited ability to affect. So it's really, I think, an open question on if they're gonna be able to turn their fortunes around by November. Rachel, I'm curious from your perspective. I mean, there's a lot going on here, right? We've got an economy uh, with uh, extremely high inflation. We've got uh, weapons being sent over to Ukraine, a lot of money being uh, being allocated there. There is a threat of a nuclear war coming from not only just Russia, but also now North Korea. What do you think is the one thing, if you had to pick, that is hurting the Democrats the most? Well, I think all the things you know that you just mentioned it really do threaten Americans, these broad forces they feel are outside of their control. But I think the mistake Democrats are making is not even focusing on the things that they can control. And in fact, I think exacerbating the irritation and annoyance that a lot of Americans feel about, again, things Democrats can control. I think uh, just a microcosm of this question is the most politically tone deaf thing I've seen Democrats do in a while, which is to challenge and appeal uh, the recent ruling on dropping the airline mask mandate, while at the same time lifting pandemic restrictions at the border. You know, this is, again, a small microcosm of, I think, larger forces at work, but it's one of the most politically stupid things I've ever seen. You know, I fly all the time. I was on a plane earlier this week. I'll be on a plane tomorrow. No one's wearing masks. I think trying to force people back into that just reminds them, um, you know, that this administration is more interested in nannying, you know, what they do day to day than addressing, again, these very broad uh, forces that, that people feel are affecting them that they have no control over. So I think, you know, every party in power loses seats in the midterms. Democrats are on track right now to make it worse for themselves, not better. You know, Chris, I was interested uh, about the polling indicating interest in an uh, independent or a third party candidate. I'm an independent voter. I think Kim has supported independent candidates in the past. Uh, so I get excited when I hear things like that. But then, of course, the, the, the two party system really always ends up grinding that down to just a few percentage points as people you know, eventually break. Uh, for, for one or the other. And any reason, is there any reason to think it would somehow, for some reason, be different um, uh, next time? 
So uh, first, let me respond quickly to something Rachel just said. Uh, masks on planes are actually still somewhat popular. We have polling. The Associated Press has polling showing a majority of Americans, including a majority of flyers, support those. I don't think that the Biden administration chasing masks is the big failure. It's really the fact that there's still large amounts of inflation in the economy. People are feeling the price pressure every time they go to the pump. They see prices going up. That's the thing that's hurting Democrats more than anything. Uh, but turning to the third party question, uh, I think this is the reality of the fact that all major politicians right now in America are unpopular. Biden's underwater. Trump remains underwater. In a situation like that, of course, you're going to see a large number of Americans wanting somebody better. The problem is there's the ideal of somebody better and the reality of whoever it is you end up picking. And the reality never seems to quite measure up. So you never quite get that third party candidate who really breaks through because they have to work in the real world. You want to respond to that, Rachel? Well, you know, I think going back to the mask issue, I don't think it's the thing that's going to take Democrats down. I think it's representative of the fact that this is where they're wasting their time when, in fact, there are much bigger issues they need to be focusing on. But in terms of independent candidates, you know, I tend to agree a little bit with Robbie with your assessment in the sense that, you know, I think in theory, people love the idea of an independent candidate. But when it comes down to brass tacks, when it actually comes down to pulling the lever in the voting booth, you know, they are they voters tend to sort of retrench. Um, and I think it also really depends on who the independent candidate is. I don't think that there has been right. necessarily a compelling person put forward uh, in this regard. I don't think sort of the Romney Cheney, you know, post-party approach to politics is going to resonate nationally. Um, and I think those two at this point are the most viable options that we have on the right anyway for someone to run uh, independent. So I do think we're kind of stuck uh, <laughs> with what we got, uh, even though I think you know the negatives for both are pretty high. Right. Well, and, and I think it matters. I mean, it matters who the candidates are. So to some extent, we know, I think we know with relative certainty, I, I absolutely think that Biden will be the the Democratic nominee that he will run for re-election. There, there's certainly question, right? There's a greater question for what the Republican situation will be because we don't know for certain uh, whether whether Trump is going to go for it. And you know, there it may be the case that there are voters who would be interested in an independent candidate if there if there are only other non-Biden choices, Trump, but not if it's like virtually any other Republican. Or I guess theoretically it could be the other way around too. There could be voters who are only voting for Trump, no matter, you know, who, if it's some other re Republican, then they're interested in an independent candidate, I don't know. But uh, with Democrats' electoral future more uncertain than ever, the Biden administration is quietly preparing for an onslaught of GOP-led congressional investigations next year should Republicans regain control of Congress. According to the Washington Post, the White House has already begun staffing up in anticipation of going on uh, the defense. So, uh, Chris, does that... Does that uh, I, I guess, could, could, could that, you know, shock the... the party in charge currently into into, I don't know, trying harder or if it's a matter of like life and death of, of survival of, of, you know, facing inquiries, that kind of thing, um, if, if they lose power. Well, this uh, presidential elections and midterm elections have very little connected together. The Democrats could lose a ton of seats this year and still potentially mount a pretty strong campaign in 2024. And I think one of the things Democrats are really struggling with this year is the fact that they control uh, Congress and the White House and Democratic voters are feeling like there's not a lot to get enthused about. Democratic enthusiasm is much lower than Republican enthusiasm is right now. Um, but one thing that American politics has shown over the last couple of decades is fear and anger are powerful motivators. So if you see Republican committees filing all sorts of hearings and having all sorts of very inflammatory sort of show trials, uh, that'll give Democrats something to get enthused about and potentially turn their fortunes around for 2024. Rachel, do you think it's going to be politically popular for Republicans to go after Democrats in these kind of onslaught of investigations if they take over, probably when they take over uh, Congress in the fall? You know, I think it really depends, honestly, on the breakdown of the Congress. You know, if you have, you know, 
a full Republican House or Republican Senate, but Biden in the White House, I think the expectations change a little bit versus a Republican House, a Democratic Senate. The expectations change there, too. If, you, if you're not going to be able to accomplish your legislative agenda, then your oversight agenda is where you really have to double down. And I do think there's some element of the Republican base that does, you know, want these things investigated. They feel, you know, as though they've been treated unfairly, that Biden has been given an advantage, that no one's looked into very, you know, flamingly obvious questions about, you know, what his son was doing uh, in Ukraine and elsewhere. And I think they do want answers in that regard. And one thing I do think that may come back to bite Democrats is the astounding precedent they've established for uh, the January 6th Select Committee. Uh, we have never seen a committee as uh, willing to throw precedent overboard as we have with this committee. They've laid down some tremendous markers about what a committee can demand uh, in terms of documents, records, even on their own colleagues. I don't know if Republicans will embrace that, but some form of Rubicon has been crossed uh, in terms of what uh, what can be done by congressional committee. I don't know if Republicans will pick that up, uh, but it is available to them. Mm -hmm. well, All right, well. As President Biden falters in the polls, Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are attracting attention around Washington for what some party members say appear to be, quote, early national campaigns in waiting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't What do you think about that, Kim? I, I, I don't think uh, they're actually going to fight with Biden for, I mean, they're they, not, they're not yeah. going to fight with Biden. So, I mean, if Biden wants the nomination, Biden gets it. It's the right. same thing for the Republican side. I think if Trump wants it, Trump gets it. You know, you I don't know so? if any, I mean, yeah, I think people will try to fight him. I think you're going to get those never Trump or Republicans who are going to try well, to go after him, but I don't think it's going to be very successful. I don't think a Ron DeSantis is going to go after Trump. I don't, what do you think, Rachel? I think that's right. You know, we've discussed this a couple of times on the show. I think for, you know, the, the reality remains Trump still is the most popular Republican in the party. People are not going to challenge him. I mean, you, you, you may see a few, you know, stray uh, people that, that try to go after him. I think it'll be unsuccessful. I think, Kim, you're right. If he wants the nomination, he's going to get it. What do you think about that, Chris? Is it Trump's if Trump wants it, it's his end of story? I think Trump certainly has the advantage in a Republican nominee uh, nomination. Uh, as Rachel said, he is still the most popular figure in the party. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a slam dunk, though. We have seen his sort of stature decline a little bit since he's left office. But mm -hmm. I don't think that any of the other Republicans are going to want to damage their own brands. Any of the other Republicans that have a good chance, I should say, uh, are going to want to damage their own brands by going against Trump, who has proven to be a masterful political communicator uh, and very adept at destroying his enemies. What about uh, on the Democratic side? Do you think that uh, Warren or Bernie can, uh, you know, challenge Biden or what? I mean, what if Biden decides not to run? Do you think either of them have a shot at the nomination? All the energy in the Democratic Party is certainly on the left. That's where sort of the, the enthusiasm, the passion is. So I think if Biden decides not to run, uh, Sanders or Warren or some other sort of uh, liberal stalwart has a pretty good shot uh, I don't really see them challenging Biden if he does announce. It's not really how Democrats have traditionally done things, at least not since 1980. Um, but uh, I do think that uh, that is where a lot of the passion lives, is in that Sanders-Warren side of the party. Well, Rachel Bovard, Chris Jackson, thank you so much for joining us. Great Thanks, to be with guys. You. And we'll have more Rising right after this.